Thank you for being here. We just want to give you some quick selling points um, on the NCBH. You see right here the models. So there are five different models. The back numbers are your heating numbers and you'll see better on another slide down the road what those mean. What is a combination boiler? A combination boiler is able to heat space heating water and domestic water out of the same box. Two separate heat exchangers, okay? We have a space heating heat exchanger and a domestic water heat exchanger. We're completely stainless steel on everything, 95% efficient. Turn down ratio is improved, so we have lower, lower turn downs for smaller spaces. Venting options, two inch and three inch. Real nice display and a built-in zone controller so we can control zone pumps or zone valves, three zones off the boiler itself with no, no extra boards or communication. All right, like I said, you'll see the space heating numbers here. So this is the input which matches those numbers and if we take 95% of that, we get our output heating capacity right here. All right, this is important too. So this is the domestic water side, okay? We're in Virginia. We have about 55 degree groundwater at worst case. So. We're going to be looking at the 67 degree temperature rise right here. We go across and we see the different models and the different outputs on the domestic water side. So with the largest one, we can get 5.6 GPM at a 67 degree rise. Middle of the summer, when the groundwater is a little bit warmer, you're going to get a little bit more than 5.6. So just be aware of how that works. All right, we just see the specs on it, the weight of the unit. This is all on the back of the brochures that we've been handing out. Um, dimensions. And then venting, you'll see two inch, three inch, and then the temperature settings down here. What the inside of the machine looks like, we have our primary heat exchanger, our secondary heat exchanger, and then back behind this board, we have our domestic water braze plate heat exchanger. So this is what our braze plate heat exchanger looks like on our domestic water, okay? This is our pump for our boiler itself, okay? So this makes sure the boiler itself gets the, enough flow to protect the boiler at all times. Warranty, 10-year heat exchanger, five-year parts, one-year labor. The key thing on this, on anything Navian-wise, whether we're startup, maintenance, or dealing with warranty stuff, we have to call tech support all the time on every time you're on the job site. They document everything with the serial number. Okay, accessories, all this stuff comes in the box. So you get a relief valve, you got your conversion kit for your propane, you got a little extra parts and pieces down here, fuses and some O-rings. You have an outdoor temperature sensor comes in the box for outdoor reset. Um, and then the two inch vent termination kits. If they're running extra length and they're going to three inch, they need to, you need to order the three inch ones. And you'll see those, they don't show them, but they do sell three inch ones that, that go in as well. These are optional accessories. If we're going over the three zones that our boiler is capable of, we're gonna need to go with another zone controller. Condensate neutralizer kit, we'll talk about that. Uh, universal temperature sensors for supply sensing, supply return sensing on the boiler itself. Uh, Wi-Fi, and we have our manifold down here. And we'll look at all this stuff a little bit more in depth in a little bit. All right, installation, the only thing I need you guys to think about installation-wise, are we meeting the required capacity? Okay, are we giving the contractor what he needs? Okay, they need to do, the, if they're replacing like for like, then that's fine. If they're asking us to do BTU loads, they're coming to the wrong place. They need to do them themselves with a the manual J or they need to get an engineer to do a BTU load calculation for them. Okay, we need to make sure we got our gas type. Obviously, it's fuel convertible. Make sure the contractor's aware of that. Make sure our gas pressures are white and then our water pressures and our supply voltages. All right, the only thing I want you to get out of this is just the flexibility, right? We can do fin, fin tube radiate or fin tube baseboards. We can do radiators, the old cast iron radiators. We can do in floor radiant. We can do air handlers. We can do anything with this boiler that anybody else can do, space heating wise. And our max in this boiler is 35% glycol. So if they're running glycol in their system, they need to test it. They're, they make little kits out there that you can test the glycol with, but it needs to be no higher than 35% glycol. So this is basically what your system looks like. And the reason I put this slide in here is because I want you to understand our pump is right here in our boiler and it's the space heating pump for our boiler, right? So our, we bring in water from the return right here, comes through the boiler, through the heat exchanger and goes out hot right here, okay? Our onboard pump. Now you have system pumps. You can have one system pump in zone valves or you can have multiple system pumps, okay? But those are required. So just because we have a pump on board does not mean it can, it can supply the system. 
Okay, you got to have something else to pump water through the system. It's called primary secondary boiler piping. Relief valve comes in the box. There's a place right on top for the relief valve to screw onto. Okay. If you get the manifold kit, which I strongly recommend you getting and selling, it makes the install completely easy. All right. The manifold kit screws right to the bottom of the unit. It also comes with this little tree that goes on top in an air vent. Okay, because we have to bleed air out of the system somehow, right? So instead of just putting our relief valve up there, we put our tree up there with our relief valve and our air separator or our air vent. It's not really an air separator, it's an air vent. If the, if the local code that you're selling this boiler to requires an external low water cutoff, there's a place for that to go right here as well. Okay, so that's a pretty important piece right there. Like I said, this is a kit that I would sell on every boiler installation. Magnetic filter. So if you've ever seen heating water, it's black. That black stuff is metal, okay? In the new boiler systems, they have small tubes and waterways in them. We need to make sure we clean that system up as much as possible. This is very, very important. I would also sell this on every boiler application I can as well, okay? Boiler fill. So to fill a boiler system, usually you have an external fill valve with a backflow and a pressure reducing valve and all that stuff on it. We don't have to have that. We have to have a backflow, but you don't have to put a PRV on it, and it goes right into my boiler. The benefit of that is, is I have freeze protection. So if a pipe in the house busts or something, I'm not going to flood your house. If I fill the system more than three times in 24 hours, it shuts down, or if I fill the system for more than five minutes continuously, it shuts down. So that's why it's important to use my onboard fill. It's just important for the contractor to know. Valve kits, please put valve kits on the bottom of it when we're doing our domestic water. That way we can shut it off, test it, do whatever we need to do. Um, clean the heat exchanger, flush it later. We need a half a gallon a minute on the domestic side to run the, the domestic water, okay? So if we have a sink upstairs, it's a low flow sink and you know that he's got it trickling through there, it might not be enough to put on, cut on the domestic water. So it's just something we need to think about. Domestic hot water temperature range, 86 to 140 degrees are our set points. All right, so recirc, we can do recirc off of this. We would have to sell an external pump. These are the pumps that they have recommended. It just depends on your application, how big the house is, the whole nine yards. These pumps, we'll see the capability of them down here. Half inch pipe, we can do 100 feet. Three quarter inch pipe, we can do 400 feet. I don't want to see any more than four GPM going through my unit during recirc, okay? And I don't want to see usually under two GPM. So keep it between two and four GPM usually for recirc. Okay, I can plug it straight into my board with the pump cable and I'm good for two and a half amps. And then there's multiple ways that I can program it for. I can program it on a schedule. I can program it to where it senses temperature and cuts on as needed. There's multiple ways we can program the domestic research to work and we'll go over that later. Gas connections, what I need you to know here, natural gas, I need three and a half to ten and a half inches. Somewhere in the middle there, okay? That's it. It's pretty easy. LP 8 to 13 inches. Same thing. Somewhere in the middle there and I have to make no other adjustments. Make sure your pipe, you know, to talk to the contractor, make sure his gas pipe is right. LP conversion kit comes in the box. It goes right up here behind, the, behind this gas train that goes up to Dual Venturi. Okay? There's also an a elevation conversion kit in there too. So there's two conversion kits in the box. We don't need the elevation conversion kit around here. Just make sure your contractor knows that they need to be looking for the LP conversion kit because I've already had that happen. They put the wrong one in. Vent installations. Direct pipe versus non-direct. Direct vent is two pipe systems going out. Okay, so I have an exhaust and I have an intake. Non-direct is one pipe. I have an exhaust but no intake. I'm using inside combustion air. I want you to run two pipes 99.9% .9 of the time. Very rarely is there enough combustion air inside. It doesn't matter if it's a garage. It's national fuel gas code. It's not a Navian rule. It's 50 cubic feet per 1,000 BTUs. If you calculate that out, it's a room that's about 30 by 30 with 10 foot ceilings, okay? And nothing in it. Once you start parking cars in there and building shelves and putting a workbench in there, it doesn't work anymore, okay? This is very, venting is very, very important. They can use a concentric kit if they want. There's, there's a couple different concentric kits that are approved. Um, make sure it's approved. All the ones that look like potato guns, rocket launchers, whatever you want to call it, they're all approved. The flat bay ones, 
there's only certain models that are approved and they got a little lip on the front of them. So you make sure you look that up before you sell them one of those. All right, venting materials, PVC, CPVC. It says schedule 40 or 80. It has to be solid core. So PVC cannot be foam core. It's gotta be pressure pipe. CPVC has to be schedule 80. It's gotta be the gray stuff, okay? You can't use the, the beige water pipe. It doesn't work. So PVC, we need solid core pipe, pressure pipe. CPVC, it has to be schedule 80. We can do polypropylene, which is a real nice material to vent with, and we can do stainless steel, okay? We can vent two inch, 65 feet, and a maximum number of bends. It says elbows, but it's bends. I don't care if it's a 22 and a half, a 45, or a 90. You can only put six of them on each pipe. Exhaust and intake, okay? If we go up to three inch, we can go 150 feet, and the max number of bends is eight, okay? And those, those elbows and 45s have links on them too, okay? It's an installation manual. I'm not expecting you guys to remember that. Just tell the contractor it's an installation manual. VID, vent installation detector. If they do not insert their pipe far enough down into this, it will not run. It's gotta be three inches. They can measure up three inches on their pipe, make a Sharpie mark around it, and make sure it seats all the way into that machine. All right, condensate. So condensate is extremely acidic. We see the chart over here. We're somewhere between three and a half and five. Pretty acidic, okay? We'll eat out copper pipes. We'll eat out iron pipes over time. We'll etch concrete, we'll etch brick, we'll put water spots on cars. You gotta be very careful on where you vent these things and where you drain the, the um, condensate. And this is our condensate trap. It's half inch and we can use condensate neutralizers. If we put it through a condensate neutralizer, which we'll see here, right here, all it is is lime chips. It neutralizes the acid and we can drain it anywhere at that point. We can put it down whatever drain, iron, copper, whatever it may be. Keep it half inch. Okay, sometimes we'll order a kit like this and it'll come with 3 8 barb fittings. That 3 8 tube is not going to drain your water fast enough. Please keep it half inch and vent or drain with plastic. Wiring, the only thing I want to go through on this, plugs into the wall, no GFCI, 15 amp circuit, dedicated circuit is not required. Okay, it says it's recommended, but I see that very, very rarely. Okay, it's not required. You can plug it into the plug that's on the wall. The other thing I want to go over is our, we had talked about it, we can do the zone pumps. We can wire three zone pumps over here. Our thermostats go right here. Okay, our sensors go right here. If we don't have pumps, we have valves, we wire the valves over here. We can only do valves or pumps. We can't do a combination of both. All right, so just be aware of that. It's pretty nice, that's, that's pretty awesome. All right, we talked about this. PVC is only good to 149 degrees. If my machine is gonna be set for 150, 160, 170 degree supply temperature, I need to go with CPVC and the contractor has to flip a dip switch to allow the exhaust vent to go over that temperature. It's very important because it will never reach that temperature if it doesn't. Just make sure your contractor's aware of that when he buys it from you. Control panel, it's pretty slick. LED, backlit, control buttons, our dial, turn it up and down, all right? This badge is if we have outdoor reset set up, okay? This badge is if the boiler's running. This badge is if we have an alarm, it's a wrench, okay? This is freeze protection. This is if we have a, a main or a subunit, it'll have an M or an S there. And this is if our domestic hot water's running. Space heating, pumps one, two, three, whether they're calling or not. Okay, space heating temperature, domestic water temperature, pressure in the system. Okay, outdoor reset temperature. Buttons are pretty self-explanatory. If I hit the center button on the dial, I go farther into the menu. If I hit the back button, I go back to the previous menu, okay? The mode menu button get, takes me to the main menu. The power button, if I turn the power off right there, it turns the keypad and everything off. Freeze protection still works. Okay, freeze protection still works if I turn it off there, but the space heating and domestic does not. Again, dial, I dial up and down, dial goes up and down, and if I want to go farther into the menu, I push it. Startup wizard, I just want to go over this real quick with you guys. I don't expect you to remember it. This is what they'll see when they first plug the machine in and go into the startup wizard, okay? 
language, time, date, all that good stuff, Fahrenheit, natural gas or propane. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. If we go into an error, this is what the error codes look like now. It flashes red on the screen. Okay, so you're not gonna, it's, it's not gonna be a question whether it's an error or not. If the whole screen flashes red and it shows us what the error is and a little quick thing to check. If we get an error code, we're calling tech support 100% of the time. Documenting with them and going through troubleshooting with them. Back button resets it. If we turn it off, it also resets it. All right, the reason I wanna see this, if I put a combi boiler into a residence that has six or seven bathrooms, I'm doing radiant floor, whatever it may be in the kitchen and bathrooms, right? I'm covered it on space heating, but domestic water, I'm way undersized. I can add water heaters to it and they will talk to each other, okay? Pretty awesome feature. All right, accessories, we talked about these a little bit. Let's go over them real quick again. It's our stainless steel manifold, comes with our tree and our air vent. Part number's right there. This is our magnetic filter, okay? Very, very important on all boiler installations, retrofits, retrofits especially. NaviLink, we can do Wi-Fi, okay? Really good for rental properties, Airbnbs, apartments, condos. They can change, they can monitor error codes, they can do everything from their phone. All right, smart zone controller, we talked about this. We can control three zones off of the boiler itself. If we go over three zones, we have to go with the zone controller to control more zones. Temperature sensors, one is provided for the supply. If we want a return sensor as well for the system, not for the boiler, but for the system supply and return, we need to order another one to monitor return temperature. Condensate neutralizer, there's multiple different ones. There's a residential, covers one unit. Light commercial covers up to six units and commercial covers up to 16 units. It's a big tub. All it is is lime chips, okay, just lime rocks. You pour limestone right back in it, it's gonna disintegrate over time. That's what it's made for. We have racks, okay, if you're doing one unit, all we need is the base rack. If we're doing multiple units, we buy a base rack and every other unit we buy an, an add-on. Screws right to the side of it. Really, really nice heavy duty racks. Customer support, this is another huge thing that Navian hangs their hat on. The reason I, buy, I would buy Navian as a contractor is, A, it's the best unit in the market, B is the levels of support. Okay, Navian has levels of support, us at Ecloff have levels of support, and you at Vamac have levels of support. So that's why we're selling this. Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 8 to 8 p.m. The only days they're closed is Christmas and New Year's, so they're open 363 days a year. That's pretty awesome. To get a warranty part, it has to come through tech support. I can't get warranty parts. Nobody else can get warranty parts. It has to come from tech support, so they have to call tech support on every single call. Narrow rewards, very important. They get benefits for registering each unit they install. They also can schedule service calls now, which is extremely nice because sometimes the wait times, especially winter time, are 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes to stand on hold with tech support. If you're a Navian Rewards customer, you can schedule a service call. Navilin, if you're a Navian Rewards customer, you can also offer your customers financing. Not just for the water heater, you can do full kitchen remodels, you can do bathroom remodels, whatever. It wraps the whole thing together and go on with it. So it's another thing that they have option to have if they're Navilin. The Navian website is a huge tool, very nice. You can get any literature you want off there, brochures, installation manuals, service manuals. If we go up to the tools and resources, there's some different things up there. We can size units. Um, if we go into the tools, there's a Navi, what is it? Um, Navi Sizer, yeah, that's what it's called, Navi Sizer. You go in there, you choose residential or commercial, you put all your information in, it tells you how many units, what size they need to be, and go from there. It's got a nice printout. You can print it out and hand it to the customer. So the website is very interactive, very nice. Then we have Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, different videos you can find on YouTube and stuff. And that's all I got for you on the NCBH. Thank you.